Macy the future barber. Yes. Are you still the future? I am. Yeah. And the present. No, I'm just kidding. Well, how do you balance kind of being the person that you think is going to be the big star with trying to be one now? Uh, honestly, I mean, like everyone's asking me actually if I'm going to be like the president or if I'm going to change my name. I, I wasn't, gi I was given it. I didn't pick it for myself. So, okay. yeah. It's been about a, a little over a year mm -hmm. since you got your contract for the UFC. You won on Dana White's Contender Series. How would you describe what life has been like? It's almost surreal because... I go through it in my head, like we're in October almost now, so November is exactly a year that I've, since fighting Hannah Cyphers, so uh, life has been incredible, you know, I'm learning a lot and it's crazy to see, you know, I never would have imagined that 10 years ago I'd be sitting right here mm -hmm. talking to you or even being in the UFC, so life is amazing and uh, I'm happy with it. How often do you kind of think about it on a day to day? Probably all the time, you know, it's like there will there'll be moments in the day where you just kind of sit back and you're like, whoa, like, what am I doing here? You know, and then it's incredible, though, because I get to see, you know, where I've started and where I've come to. And um, yeah, it's just kind of daily reminders, you know, it also keeps you humble, keeps you hungry, too. You know, um, just knowing that that you started somewhere and, and at first you're a nobody and I'm still a nobody technically, right? But and that's how you have to view yourself. But at the same time, I'm this person that a lot of people want to watch and, and see fight and they look up to and young girls can look up to. So it's truly special. You view yourself as a nobody? Uh, I think everybody's a nobody in their own way. If that makes any sense at all, like um, I don't know how to, I don't know how to word it. Like we're, nobody's really truly that important because everybody's just as important. You know what I mean? Like no one person is more special than the other. So that's how you kind of take your approach to what? Just, just life in general. I mean, like if I was to stand next to someone who had just a normal job, I mean, there's nothing that really sets us apart except for the opportunities that we've been given and the advantages that we've had and the way you take advantage of the opportunities you're given. So um, on a personal level, I think we're all the same. But at the same time, some of us just get handed a little bit bigger opportunities to, to be a platform to show people that there are other ways to grow. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, your roots a little bit, how you've been doing it for a long time and kind of looking at this level for a long time. You started training very young, mm -hmm. what, three years old yeah. or thereabouts. Yep. When did you when do you remember falling in love with combat sports and mixed martial arts? Uh, well, like you said, I started when I was super young, so that's all I've ever known. Uh, I was actually just in an Uber earlier, and I was telling the, my Uber driver the story of how I started. And when I started, you know, my parents put me in as just a family thing we were gonna do, and. Growing up, I mean, you learn it and you enjoy it and you're, it's fun and you're, you're active and, and you're just growing and learning. Um, but I never truly understood how big it could be until I started competing. And, and when I started competing, then we opened our own gym and then I was just still involved in that world. And then, you know, I saw fighting. We would watch fights every weekend. We would, we would have a big get together and everybody would come and watch the fights with us. And um, just seeing the level of technique and the, the abilities that those, those men and women have um, to put themselves in like the uh, most, the most un, like, uncomfortable position but at the same time be so comfortable in it and to show off so much skill and technique, um, it's, it's amazing, you know, it's like, a, it's like art, you know, if you, that's the way I look at it is it's art. You, there's, there's so much for you to learn and grow, but at the same time, as much as you already know, you'll never know it all, and, and it's constant. So about the time that I was like 15, 16, uh, I had a, a few things go on in my life, and uh, they were pretty pivotal in, in terms of my maturity, and I was a mess. Um, and so my family friend uh, was like, you should try CrossFit. So I started doing CrossFit. And from CrossFit, that was like my first escape, was I could, I could train and I could go in the gym and I could um, completely immerse myself and not have to think about anything. 
And from there, I was like, you know, I became the gym rat. And I was like, if I go in the gym, I don't have to think about anything, I'm good. And that's when I started, you know, martial arts was still my life. And, and that being all that I had never known, I knew that I never wanted that to be something that I didn't do. And that was kind of like a joke or a dream in my mind. You know, I'm like, oh, someday I'm going to be an MMA fighter. Well, after I went through all the drama that I had to go through, I, that still was something that was in my mind. And so I started training more, and I decided to start boxing and doing striking and jiu-jitsu a lot heavier than I already was because, you know, when you're in the gym and you're not thinking about everything that you've had to go, go through in your life, um, it kind of drowns it out. So aside from just doing CrossFit, I joined, you know, started doing boxing more, jiu-jitsu, and I just completely filled my day with being in the gym. Um, so after that, that was when I was like, all right, this is something I'm, I'm really good at and I love because it, it helps me keep my mind busy. And other people saw the, the skills and, and believed in me and I started competing. And so I signed, um, did my first amateur fight and I just kept going from there and then, yeah. And now we're here. And now we're here. <laughs> did you um, compete you competed in different martial arts, mm -hmm. specific martial arts. Yeah, so when I was doing karate, I started in like 2010-ish doing karate competitions, just forms, point sparring, grappling competitions, and then from there I switched to doing just jiu-jitsu competitions, right. and then I did my first amateur MMA fight. When did you truly think, take me back to when you truly thought it could be your career? I truly thought it could be my career when I was like 15 or 16, when I started training and, and I decided, you know, I don't want to go to college, I don't want to go and, and I know what I'm going to do with my life. And it's, I'm going to be the best person that I can possibly be in martial arts. Do you remember like a moment? Do you remember the day? Um, a specific day, no. Not, not, I don't know if I have a specific day necessarily. Um, probably like, around when I had my the amateur fight, yeah. you know, when, when you go in and you have that feeling the first time you ever like just drop someone and you know it's someone that they just gave you like some random person that was kind of like an easy fight to make you feel good, but it, it did the trick. So <laughs> <It did laughs> I was hooked. Yeah, I was, I was definitely hooked. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that was, that was probably it. A lot of uh, people I think, or a lot of parents might uh, not agree with their child when they say, I don't want to go to college, I want to pursue being a professional fighter. What was the reaction from your family? Hmm. So my parents uh, are, are the kind of parents that, you know, whatever you're going to do, they're going to they're gonna help you and support you in 100%, but they're also not going to let you half way do it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to let you just say you're going to do something and not put actions towards it. So, you know, when I told my parents that I wanted to fight, um, they were like, all right, well, you have to kind of prove it to us. They, were, they wanted proof. You know, you have to show that you're willing to, to do what it takes. And, and to them, it was kind of like practice on your own and train on your own and, and put more time in. You have to go over and above what everybody else is doing. So if, if you just go to the gym, just like everybody else, that's what everybody's doing, right? In order to be different, you have to do above and beyond what everyone else is doing. So that was kind of the first step was I just, you know, I started training in, in the garage and just doing more and, and trying to go to more and more and more training sessions. And um, that, was, that was kind of like the first thing that I kind of proved to them. I'm like, this is what I want to do and I'm willing to do what it takes. And from there, my dad was, they were like, okay. So my dad sought out the best coaches that we could possibly find at the time and in our location. So we were in Colorado and he found the best coaches that we could get there and just kept trying to evolve and grow. And uh, they've been so supportive ever since the very beginning. Did you try to balance the normal life of a high school teenager and already having your eye on that goal? How, how was that? Uh, I did. Um, how did we it owned it. We, <laughs> we owned a gym from 2010 till 2018. Right. So with the gym, I was also a full-time instructor for karate for like kids and then jiu-jitsu as well. So with that, I was also homeschooled. So I was homeschooled from uh, like ninth to, well, from freshman year on. Okay. Um, and so 
It was difficult. I did uh, homeschool, but I also had a supplement program. So I, I would go to school, go to classes like twice a week. And you would go into class and you'd have a lecture and then you'd get like three days worth of homework. Then you'd go in like the third day mm -hmm. and you'd get the lecture and all the material for the next few days. So it was, it was kind of a unique situation. Um, but balancing that was difficult. You know, I'm, I was also a student that I tried really hard and I loved learning, but at the same time, trying to do that while balancing a job and your own, like, what career you, you already have chosen um, it was a lot. And so right after I finished, I, was, I knew what I was doing. So I kind of took the route of I'm not going to college. I know that that'd be a lot to balance. And, you know, maybe someday that, that's something I could go back to. But for now, you know, it'd be, a, it'd be, it'd be almost like the wrong choice for me to choose a, to, to go down a career or a path that leads me to like college. Because mm -hmm. it'd be taking time away from what I'm truly trying to become the best at. And if you're taking any time away, then you're not going to, you know, it's just one more thing that takes away. Right. Um, <clears throat> so turning pro, because mm -hmm. you didn't have a long amateur quick. career. <laughs> that was a quick turn. Uh, was it just the one amateur fight? It was just one amateur fight. So it was like amateur and then pro. Whose decision was it? Um, it was kind of like a forced situation. Uh, when I was in Colorado, I fought for a local, just a local promotion. And they were like, oh, we can get you a ton of amateur fights. They got me one amateur fight. And then after that, none of the girls wanted to fight. So I told the promotion that um, I would fight any of their pro girls. Because I did. I wanted to have multiple fights. And right. that was the route that we wanted to take. Uh, but none of the local girls wanted to go. And we even tried to like fly some in. And I'm not saying that, you know, we couldn't find any of the girls, but it was just difficult. You know, it's difficult to find, um, which makes sense. You have someone like me who has this, this hunger to, to fight and to dominate and to beat these girls up. And, and you don't have a lot of film on me. You have one film of, of me just mulling a girl. So um, I can understand why girls wouldn't want to take it. So we reached out to LFA and that's how I got, I turned pro. They were like, yeah, we can get you a fight. And so I flew out with my dad. We flew out together to one of the LFA shows and we met with um, Ed Soros and Mark Berry. And there happened to be a girls fight. It was, I want to say it was Itzel Escobar was fighting some, another one of the pro girls. And Itzel at the time was like one of their top girls. And we looked at him and I'm like, I'll fight her. Like the next fight, I'll fight her. Like I'll fight your best girl. Um, and so they, they gave it to me and I fought her on the televised portion and that was my pro debut and I beat her up. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, what did you expect when it was time to be a pro fighter and you had been thinking about it for years as a mm -hmm. teenager and training and trying to make it your life, you're about to be a pro fighter. What did you expect? Honestly, I don't have a lot of expectations in terms of what I want it to be. I have a lot of expectations when it comes to like myself and my performances and how I, how I train and how I prepare myself. But everything has been so new to me from my first amateur fight to my first pro fight to fighting on TV to fighting on the Contender Series. Like everything has been pretty new. Like there's always something that's new. So it's hard to have expectations of, all right, I want it to be like this and this and this when you can't control it, so you might as well just enjoy it. Um, in terms of lifestyle? In terms of lifestyle, like what do I expect what right now you, or what did I expect? What did you expect as like, I'm going to be a pro fighter? This is what it's going to take to get me to the UFC. Um, I mean, honestly, like if you're, if we're talking about like what it takes to get to the UFC, it just takes, honestly, I think it takes self-belief, hard work, and uh, obviously it takes a special, special opportunity and um, the right platform and the right people to surround you and the right coaches and there's a lot that goes into it you know a lot of people that you know you meet they're like oh I, I wanted to be a UFC fighter but blah 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 and that's the problem is they say but yeah. you know they're like mm, but it didn't work out this way or but I couldn't you know I just they have all these excuses and and that's that's what you got to expect is you can't expect to make excuses you can't expect to make the, the, oh, well, what if, or anything. You just got to go for it, and, and that's what we did. You know, we decided to turn, I decided to turn pro, and I decided to fight, and my family supported me, and we went for it. Harder than you thought? Easier than you thought? Um, a little bit of everything. 
you know, in terms of like training and 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 fighting. I mean, that's that's what I do. You know, I grew up in the gym, and I'm, I'll work I'll work anybody. So I'm willing to do what it takes. So that I don't think I don't think it's hard if you're if you're willing to do everything that you possibly can. Your outcome is going to be whatever the outcome is. You know, if you're giving everything you have. Uh, so it might be hard if you're not if you're not doing that. You know, like I don't know how to explain that. Yeah, no, I hear you. <laughs> if you're not willing to go as far as you possibly can to reach your goals, then it might be difficult. It might be difficult in the sense that you don't make it as far. You you picture yourself going a certain distance, but you're not willing to put in the work. And so there's this this area in between where your mind is like, well, well, it's not working, and it's difficult, and your life is complicated, and it, that's because you're not willing to do what it takes to be where you want to be. So I'm willing to do that. So no, it's not hard. Um, you win on Contender Series. Mm -hmm. You get the contract. What sticks out about that night? <sighs> um, a lot. That was that was a that was a pretty amazing moment, and I think about that all the time. My family being there was a huge one. Um, just again realizing that I've made it to where I wanted to go, and and knowing that I'm on the journey of of being where I want to be. Uh, like I said, it doesn't like nothing stands out too much because you expect it. You know, you're expecting to go out and do what you want to do and, and, and accomplish the goals that you've set. And that was just another goal and that's another, another step in, in reaching my goals and my dreams. Same for the debut in your home state. That was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty amazing. To have my whole family there and to have actual people who, who don't have to travel that far to come and watch me fight was, was pretty special. Um, Every time I talk to people, I'm always, you know, everyone's like, oh, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, Colorado. But I don't live there anymore. But it's, Colorado has always been a special place to me. And, and that's home. You know, I grew up there for 21 years. It's where I lived. So um, being able to have that moment of my first UFC fight in Denver, Colorado, where I lived and grew up was, was something I'll never forget. Yeah. Um, Nashville, just to kind of keep going through mm -hmm. the fights here. Yeah. You kind of fought some adversity in that first round. Yeah, Nashville, when I fought J.J. Aldrich, being dropped, um, the only thing I can remember from that fight is me, when I went back to my corner, I looked at Dana and I was like, I'll fix this. Like, that's exactly what I said. I looked at him and I'm like, I'll fix this. Um, because that's kind of like, I, w I wasn't discouraged because I didn't feel like I had really lost. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't go into my mind. If I go into a fight, I'm not going to go in and, and end a round, even if I did lose a round. I'm not gonna go back to my corner being like, oh man, I lost that round, you know? Uh, in my head, I was like, I understood I may have lost the round or not, but I also know that I did get dropped, but it didn't, it didn't quite register as like something bad. It was just like, I know that it probably looked bad, so I'll tell them I'll fix this and then I'll, I'll go fix it. So and you fixed it. I did, I fixed it and I finished her. Yeah. What does it mean for you to be undefeated? Um, a lot of people, think it would be a lot of pressure and it, it could be um, but again I have I have a lot of work that I put behind myself so I'm expecting that of myself you know and if the time ever comes that I that I do receive a loss um, then then I'll handle it when it comes but for now I'm, I'm gonna outwork everybody and I'm gonna I put in the time I put in the effort and I mean it's, it's something that I'm expecting, you know? It's not necessarily like a ton of pressure in the sense that like I'm afraid to lose that. It's more so pressure that I feel um, when you hear everybody being like, oh, well, she's undefeated and, and I want to take that away from her. Well, everyone said that they're going to derail the hype train and that could be understandable if it was a hype train, you know? Like, I don't view it as a hype train. It's, it's real. I'm, I'm, I'm skilled, I'm tough, I work hard, and I put in the effort, so um, hype is when it's fake. You know, this is, I'm not fake. I'm real, and, and uh, my record's real. My record is not 8-0 against a bunch of 
people who have bad records, you know? So, I don't know, that's my view. Mm -hmm. um, a lot's been made of your goals, mm -hmm. quite singularly the goal to be the youngest UFC champion. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know the date you need to do it by? So I've changed phones, so the date is not exactly on my phone. Like, I haven't looked at the date. You but, haven't, you um, haven't renewed it John, yet? No, I haven't. I got a new phone like two days ago. <laughs> so John Jones was 23 years and eight months when he broke that record. So, or when he set the record. Um, so I believe it's like two years, just under two and a half years. So it's two years and like four months. I looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> so I prepared myself. When you look at it, mm -hmm. what do you think? Because that number is always getting smaller. It's always getting smaller but I'm also always getting better. So um, that's, a, that's a big goal to set, you know, and, and that's something that I'm going to continue to work for. But again, it's just like the A&O, it's a lot of pressure, it seems like, but if you're willing to put in the work and, and you're constantly working towards it, I'm not, I'm not discouraged by that or feeling a lot of pressure. I would feel a lot of pressure if I was skipping days at the gym, if I was not always trying to keep my nutrition on point, if I was not always trying to perform the best I could possibly be. Um, I'm constantly making steps towards that goal and I'm doing everything in my capacity to reach that goal and to break that record. Um, same thing with staying 8 know, I'm doing everything in my capacity to stay that way. So there's no pressure in that sense. Um, it, seems, it seems like a long time, but at the same time, two years goes by really quick. Yeah. So. Because it was three years, right? It, it was three years, yeah, when I first signed. So I, I still feel like I have plenty of time. When did you set that as your goal? I want to say it was like three years and like 10 or nine months or something like that. When you kind of seriously said this yeah. is what I want to do. Yeah, when I, when I, when I said that I was going to do that, it was right when I started in like LFA. I was like, I'm going to get to the UFC. And then I started watching more and more fights. Obviously, I watched a ton of fights growing up, but... I started to really pay attention and to like ages and I don't want to just be a fighter that that just goes out and fights right I want to have that's not that's not a big enough goal the big enough goal is not just oh I just want to fight I want to just be a champion it's what can I what records can I break what little milestones can I can I have you know so so setting the record of beating John Jones, because I understand that I'm, I'm the youngest person, or was the youngest person, I think there's someone new um, that is in the UFC, but I was the youngest person on the roster, that was a big deal for me. Now I'm going after being the youngest person to hold a belt. Then it's, you know, how many records can I set within, within the sport? Um, and those are just goals to keep you hungry, but this, this is an important one because I know that it's an attainable goal and uh, I'm going after it. Do you remember who you told first? Who were you talking about it with? I think I told myself. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first person I yeah. told was I'm like, no, I'm gonna do that, you know? Like, um, when, when I was in Colorado, living in Colorado, I was, um, I put up like my posters, my old fight posters, and I had a mirror in my room and I like wrote on the mirror and I remember that was like the first thing that I, one of the first things that I, wrote was one of them was like around the whole mirror I wrote I will be in the UFC and I still haven't erased it like it's still on my mirror I just at your place in Milwaukee yeah I just tra made it travel I'm like it's not in my room anymore because I don't have it yeah. but um it's at my parents house and so I did I, I wrote on the mirror I was like I'm gonna be in the UFC and then after that I just kept adding so once I did that then I added like you know my record and then uh across the whole thing it was like I will be a world champion and then, and then it changed to, I will be the youngest world champion. Any so. others? Oh, there's, there's a lot on that, but. What else is on that? Um, I, I don't know. Like, I think, I, I think at the time when I had another fight coming up, I had like the person I was going to fight and like the date, um, just different motivational things. You know, I like to, I like to really write it out and see it and, and go through it in my mind. So. And then you put it on your phone. And then I put it on my phone because I can't carry a whole mirror with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of awkward. I don't like to look in mirrors all the time. So You ever look down at that timer and just not today? You know, you're having one of those days where I don't want I want to unplug from it. Um, no, I do that with my phone. Yeah, um, put the I phone do that, away. I, yeah, yeah, I'll do that with my phone. Like I won't look at my phone as much. 
like especially this camp, you know, I haven't been posting on my Instagram as much, but um, I've just tried to like kind of distance myself from that because that's what got me here is, is working and, and paying a little less attention to what's going on in the world because that doesn't matter. What matters is what's in front of you. So um, I don't do that with the goal. I do that more so with the phone and yeah. being like, all right, I don't want to pay attention. You know, I just, there's too many people trying to talk to you, too many people like you have to connect with or talk to, um, a lot of coordinating and stuff. But in terms of the goal, no, I never, I don't think there's ever been a moment where I looked at that phone and, and saw the, the countdown and was like, no, I don't want to pay attention to that. Because on the bad days when you, when I see it, it's like, all right, pick your head up. You still have work to do, you know, like that kind of stuff. And then, um, on the good days when you're like having a really great day and you're like on top of the world and I see that I'm like that's right like that's where I'm going so I think it's I think it goes both ways like it can either motivate you or it can also like keep the motivation and the momentum going one more on the phone timer thing okay I notice it says the amount of time mm -hmm. until we break a world record mm -hmm. who's we we is everybody that has helped me put energy and time into what I'm doing. So we is um, the very first boxing coach that, that I ever worked with, Brian Scraper, to the very first MMA wrestling coach that I ever worked with, Ryan Schultz, and um, Trevor Whitman. And honestly, I mean, my dad, my mom, my brothers, my sisters, um, from all of that, to the team I'm and the people I'm with now, you know, I was the, I was in Denver. I was with Mark Montoya. I was with um, Matt Pena. I was, and now I'm with, and now I'm with Duke Rufus. And it's not just one person that has helped me get to where I am, and it's not one person that's going to help me get to where I go. Um, everybody has played a very big role and a very big part of my life, and it's not just me. And I know that there's a lot of fighters that have a, just one team and they go after a, a, a record. But I truly believe that everybody's playing a part in my career, in my life, and breaking this world record. You mentioned the different places that you've trained. Oh, man, there's an endless list. Yeah. What were you looking for? What, what, are you, what, what makes it a good place for you? There's a lot. Um, because you've done some traveling. I have that. done a lot of traveling. I started, you know, I went from Colorado to Jackson Wink to Trevor Whitman to, I've, che I've checked out Matt Hume's gym. I've checked out Team Alpha Male. I've been to Rufus Sport. I've been all over. And every one of those gyms is great and everyone has something to offer for each person. In terms of me, as I seek out specific people, and the, the place that I'm with right now is, is I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be selfish. You know, I have a really big goal that I'm trying to accomplish. And it takes me being selfish and me being, um, me understanding that it's not always about who, who you like more. It's about who has the time, who has the skills, and who has the same mentality. And that's a hard thing to find because there's a lot of coaches that have the skills and mentality, but there's a lot of coaches that have big teams and they don't have the time. Um, so for me, it's, all right, can I find someone who has time, the ability, and, and the drive and the, and the desire? And, and I'm slowly accumulating those people. And there are coaches that I've worked with that I'm like, wow, you have the right mentality. Like, you have the right mentality, you have the, the drive and the heart, and you're the great personality, but you might not have the skills, right? And then there's the coaches that you're like, you have all the skills in the world, but your mind is still stuck in, well, maybe, you know? So, so that's something that keeps me searching, and, and it will always keep me searching, because you're going to always find the new coaches and the new people. Um, and I heard, I heard Jessica, I actually say it. It's not just one person that can be in charge and be you know, the head, the head coach. It just depends on the person that you're fighting at the time and the stylistic matchup that you have um, that determines, all right, this person's in charge or this person's in charge or we need to rely heavier on this so he's going to be in, in, in the lead. Um, and finding coaches that can mesh with that and, and do that is, is difficult. So um, that's, that's one thing that's kept us searching. Uh, 
I moved out specifically to Wisconsin originally for Ben Askren. There's no doubt in my mind that he's the best wrestler in the world, the best MMA wrestler in the world, and, and he has a mind. He's been, he's been around, you know, he's been in, in so many different fights, and he's got the right mentality, he has the skills, um, and so that's someone that I really wanted to work with because I truly believe that he can help me attain this goal. Um, so he's something that, that we looked after because I feel confident in my striking. You know, my striking's evolved, my grappling's evolved. But I look at the girls in the division and that's something that I could improve on. So I needed to find the best wrestling coach that I could find. And I believe that he's, he's it. So going after Ben Asker and my dad and I, um, we, start, we, we went and we looked for him and, and we, we found him and we asked him if he would work with me. And, I convinced him that I'm going to be a world champion, and, and now I get to work with him, you know, and that's a huge blessing. Um, and, of course, having MMA, being able to continue with striking and grappling and, and all of that on the other side uh, at Rufus Sport. But the main reason why I, why I really wanted to go out to Wisconsin and to continue to travel was to add that piece of wrestling. So. Next fight coming up. Yeah. Boston's the stage. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? I'm excited. I actually, I'm not sure if I've been to Boston. I think I would have when I was younger, but um, I don't really remember it. So when I was offered this fight, uh, we were talking about a couple different places. Either, I believe it's Tampa on the 12th mm -hmm. or Boston on the 18th. Um, I was like, I really want to, I heard that Boston's a great crowd and people get excited and they're, they're rowdy fans. So I really got excited about that. I'm like, yeah, let's fight in Boston. Like, that would be fun. I like good energy. You know, I like going out and having people scream and having people excited. Um, whether it's good or bad energy, I, I don't care. As long as it's loud and it's obnoxious, it's great. <laughs> yeah. So um, that was something that I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, for this fight, we're going out. It's on a Friday. So I end up, I'm going to be staying two days after as well, which is something I don't normally do. But um, we're going to drive to the ESPN headquarters in Connecticut on Monday. So I'm looking forward to having that and being able to actually see some of the area. So, yeah. Yeah. Drive to ESPN for what? Um, we talked to Ariel Hawani, and I'm going to try oh, to cool. yeah, on the show. Yeah, do some, cool. some media. Um, what do you think of your opponent? I'm excited. She's another one that thinks she's going to derail this hype train. Um, I think, I think it's, a, it's a really good fight for me. Uh, and the reason why is because I believe that everyone's kind of underestimating my ground game. And the reason behind that is I've never really been on the ground too much because I've finished the girls standing up now, right? So um, nobody's really gotten to see that side of me. And that's where she likes to live is on the ground. So Jillian is, is a huge fan of, obviously, it's, it's where she's finished. You know, her last fight was was on the ground and she submitted a lot of girls. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited. You know, this could be a really good highlight reel for me. Do you acknowledge it as a tough challenge? Uh, I, I treat every fight as though it's a tough challenge. You know, I put a lot of pressure on it. I put a lot of, um, and that's why I work hard, right? But when I fought JJ Aldrich, I also viewed it as like, okay, this is, this is JJ Aldrich. I know that she's, she's a very, underestimated, like underappreciated fighter in, in the UFC. You know, a lot of people didn't give her credit for the ability and that she's a sound fighter. You know, she had a lot of skills and uh, I treat every girl like that. You know, um, I don't believe that Jillian is nearly as well-rounded as JJ was, but she's got more skills on the ground maybe than, than JJ does. Um, so I kind of I kind of go through all that. A lot of it's like on paper, you know. You can you can write down all the things they're good at, all the things they're bad at. But at the end of the day, if if they were bad at them, they're going to be working on them, so they could be completely different. Uh, and if they're good at it, then they're going to continue to be better at it. So um, I'm going to treat every I always treat every fighter like they're going to be the best that they can possibly be, which is what I expect out of everyone that I fight. Um, and that's why I try to be the best that I can be. Earlier, you were talking about 
looking at your phone and on the good mm -hmm. days, the timer can motivate you on the yeah. bad days, you know, it, it kind of picks you up and gets you back on course. What is a bad day for you? Um, so a bad day would be like me going to sparring with the wrong mindset. And the wrong mindset is, okay, I have to do everything perfect. So when I do that, especially at the gym that I'm at right now, you know, I'm the only girl when it comes to sparring. So I put myself in the shoes and I expect myself to be as, as strong or as fast or as, as quick or, or as anything as the guys, um, which, is, which is good. It's the right mindset to have, kind of. Um, and a lot of the guys I'm sparring with are good fighters. You know, there's either Bellator or UFC or um, one FC or there's some one of the they're in one of the organizations, right? So they're they're good, they're scrappers, and they're tough. And uh, they all have they all have reach on me, they all have strength on me, and all of and all of that plays a big part. So for me, like a bad day of sparring is okay. I go in and they piece me apart and I still land but every time I land they don't move but every time they land I like go flying yeah. so like that's that's frustrating to me is letting that get to my head is is when okay I, I may have landed all my strikes that I did and technically it was a great round but mentally I'm like none of those affected them but in reality if I was the spar girl they wouldn't react quite like the guys do so just managing that and understanding that that's the mental side of the, the training that I have to get through is, is that part, is knowing that I'm, ar I'm already at the disadvantage being the female in the gym, but knowing how to overcome that is something that makes it hard. So, so much has been made of that goal mm -hmm. of youngest UFC champion. Yep. Have you thought about what happens after January of 2022. What happens after? What's your goal? What then, what then drives you? Hmm. I mean, well, first it'd be defending that belt that I get. Um, that's a good question, actually. I don't know if I've thought too much about that because, you know, I, I set small goals and I set big goals. I don't try to set 50 big goals because that's a lot and I don't want to try to like reach those goals while I'm trying to reach one goal. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like trying to, I don't know, like when you're in the middle of climbing a 14er, saying you're going to climb like 50 and like trying to do all 50 in like one day, like that's a lot. Yeah. But if you can think about it like that, like my little goal is, all right, I'm going to go out and finish this next fight. I'm going to finish it, right? My other goal, my other little goals is, okay, I'm going to go into today's training sessions and I'm going to, and I'm going to evolve and I'm going to grow and I'm going to make improvements in today, right? And then, then I have my fight and then I have like weekly goals, you have daily goals, you have monthly goals, and then you have like specific, like every other, like a fight goal, right? And then, and then I have that one big goal. And so I don't try to set too many big, big goals yet. Um, just because I don't want I don't want to ever deter or or lose sight of that. Yeah. Do you have more big goals? Just the one. Right now, no, I don't. Just the one. I just have the one. Yeah. Well, luckily you have about two years to figure <laughs> out what comes after it, right? Yeah, I do. Macy Barber, thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck.